Okay, for lab 12, we've got a titration of a common acid. Now, what we're using for our common acid is household vinegar, as you can see over there. Now, into the household vinegar, I have added a small quantity of the indicator. Now, this time the indicator is called phenolphthalein. Now, phenolphthalein is different than the indicator we used in the hardness lab because it has no color in the acidic state. When you go from acidic to neutral or basic, it's going to turn a pinkish to fuchsia color. Now, it should just be the barest blush of pink when you do this. If you go all the way to fuchsia, you've probably overshot and you've ended up in a basic territory. So, as with last time, I have rinsed out the graduate or the burette with the ionized water twice, and then I have filled it with my known, which in this case, there we go, is one molar sodium hydroxide. Okay? And as you can see, I filled it to 0, 0.0. So like with last time, we're going to start a steady but slow stream of drops. You don't want to crank it too much, you end up throwing a bunch down here. Ooh, see? Now see how the color appears and then disappears? That's because it locally changes the color of it, but it hasn't changed the entire thing. And what we want it to do is we want to get to that one drop that changes the whole material. All right? So we constantly are moving it around, trying to distribute that material around. There's going to be one drop where the whole thing's going to turn pink. So again, our unknown here is acetic acid, and our known is the one molar NaOH, and that allows us to determine the molarity of the acetic acid. Uh, see how the drops start to linger longer and longer in the system? That means we're getting closer and closer, and it's harder to dilute it out. You know, it's got to be careful you don't hit the side of the beaker like I'm doing. It's a little tough sometimes. I'm going to slow it down a bit. When I fall, no, we're just getting to that point. The white background of the ring stand helps because you can see the color change pretty obviously in it. Notice each time that color lingers just a little bit longer. Oops. I don't want to go too far. The biggest problem with titrations is going too fast. See how long that drop lingered? It means I'm getting closer. So I don't want to go too fast and I don't want to hit the side if I can all avoid it. Kind of hard to do while I'm sitting here staring at this through a camera. Wow, three minutes, 35 seconds. I think this is the longest demo video I've given you guys. Hopefully you're not tired of them by now. Between this and the screencasts and the calculation examples, you get to hear my voice a lot. Don't know how much to see my face, but you'll get to hear my voice at least. I'll just let that one sit there for a second. Whoop. All right, swirl. Still not there, still turning clear. Go a little bit faster for a second. It's always a challenge. Whoopsie. That was not good. Phew. Lucked out. Didn't overshoot it. Ooh, getting close. Feel it. Like, yeah, you said that like 15 years ago. This is a lot easier when I'm not staring through a camera. Come on.
killing me here. Almost. Almost. And you're like, well, I'm kind of happy I don't have to do this for real. This seems tedious, Dr. Ireland. You know, I had a whole class of this in undergrad called analytical chemistry. I did a bunch of these types of reactions. Learning how to measure things the old fashioned way. Alright, come on. Turn pink for me. Mm -hmm. Notice how the drop's getting bigger and bigger in there. Wow, six minutes. It's a record long video. Hopefully I don't exceed YouTube. Oh, it's getting close. Look at that. The whole thing turns pink for just a second. There we go, got it. Ah. Went a little far, but not too bad. For how I was doing it, that's pretty good. And that gives us a final volume of Get down some in line here. 15.5. All right, I'll run two more trials and post the data for you.